nice woodwork in here for a uh, production line boat, isn't it? It's kind of a surprise for a 27-footer. This boat is getting more amazing as we walk through it. I love that. Captain, what are you doing? I'm calling the chickens over. Come on, chick, 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 chick. How do you like that? Hi there, this is Captain Koo and my old sailing buddy, Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. Hey guys, chicken. Hey Captain, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm calling the chickens over. Come on, chick, 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 chick. I don't know, how do you call a chicken? Are you trying to provision the boat before you head out to sea? Well, it just occurred to me, if you took a couple of chickens on board for a long trip, you could have fresh eggs every day. Non-stop. Non-stop. You just gotta be careful they can't roll around too much. <laughs> or you would have scrambled eggs. All right, well, we're gonna go look at the boat. If you wanna come along, just fly on up. We'll see you later. Nice seeing you, and listen, by the way, I enjoy you guys every morning and the stuff you bring to my life. We have an island pack at 27. Oh, finally. Finally, we've had so many requests for island packets. These are the invention, so to speak, of a man named Robert K. Johnson. He really is designing boats for cruising. That's it. He, he will tell you right off the bat they're fine sailing boats, but he knows they're not going to win races. They're a little bit too wide, too beamy, too shallow a draft, no thin keels, and that sort of thing. But that's not where he's going. His primary interest is safety and comfort at sea. She's going to have a lot of waterline to her, isn't she? And uh, uh, not a lot of draft down here, but she has that long keel. This was actually kind of a stretch version of even their Island Packet 26, which then morphed itself into an Island Packet 26 2. With this boat, you suddenly start to get headroom. Now, this guy uh, has got our old friend Bob here, right? Ooh. But Bob, I think, has bumped into something. Yeah, I see a little crack. There. Got a little little bend while I'm thinking, yeah, and it's, it's also cracked this piece too. So it was enough to bend the bob stay. Fiberglass uh, casting for the uh, bowsprit, if you see that up there. So that's kind of nice in a way because, you know, a lot of these are wood and yeah. they have a tendency to be left unattended and the varnish shrinks and goes away. And it's just not a great thing. And it's all molded in up here. Original gel coat appears to be intact and, and looks good. Uh, she's had her boot top painted, obviously for 1990 boat. This bottom is okay. If you put the boat over the side, you could go sailing, but you wouldn't go very fast. Uh, you're losing a, at least a knot with this bottom. We have a uh, engine intake here, pretty massive uh, intake, and it's kind of pretty well coated over with, with uh, barnacle growth and so forth. For very cheap, if you keep your boat in the water, a lot of people may not think about this, but just hire a diver. Diver come over, I'm going to quote old old world prices, 100 bucks or so. It's probably now $200. But they go over the side, and they'll keep this bottom smooth as silk, and they'll wash the the, uh, the boot top as well. Uh, big barn door, simple rudder here uh, to the boat, and we have a really fast. They've done away with a maxi prop here. That's the maxi maxi one. That this just is a, totally disappears. Yes, this Randy. Uh, if you sail on this boat, you're occasionally asked to slip over the side when they want to go home fast, and you put the propeller right on there yourself. Yeah. We don't know what's happening with that as far as the, the um, stuffing box or the cutlass bearing. Does it feel like there's any play right No, I mean, it's, it's rock solid, but I don't know if, yeah. what that means. Now, we have, the, uh, we have a double-hung rudder here, and then down at the bottom, off a big blade coming off the, the, uh, the keel. And this is hanging, helping to steady this whole rig, but what else is it doing? Uh, protecting stuff from getting up and hitting it. Right. It's a lobster preventer. This may be from the sink or the engine exhaust. It could even be an engine exhaust coming over here. Or, sc or um, scuppers, maybe? It's a, yeah, it could be a scupper. Now, one of the beauties of these, of the island packets, is that Robert K. Johnson was really interested in safety, too. And back in the 90s, when they came out with the concept of uh, the ISO, do you know what the ISO stands for? Uh, it's like International Standards Organization? International Organization of, of Standardization. Oh, okay. And the object to that was, I think you were discussing with me a little earlier, to try and come up with standards for everything. Cars, uh, sofas, eggs, uh, boats, and so forth. And in his case, uh, Robert was asked to uh, work on the ISO uh, standard of seafaring um, sturdiness, for lack of a better word. He had seven different categories, and the boat had to fall into those categories. 
And if it did, it got an A rating. If it missed it, it got a B rating. This boat originally came out with a B rating, and he said, but with very few tweaks, which he didn't enumerate, you could make it an A boat. Hmm. And then he, but he said now, since he's established that, all island packets are now category A under the ISO rulings of uh, standardization of design and safety at sea. What do you think of the bilges and on the shape of the hull from... Well, she's pretty flat under there, isn't she? Yeah. And, and look at her buttocks coming back here. She's going to have a good flat run coming back here. And uh, uh, so off the wind, she should be a bit of a, uh, a little bit of a horse racer. I just want to say one more thing about Robert Johnson. He actually was born in, I think, Ohio somewhere. And like a lot of kids back then, they doodled sailboats and and uh, he actually built a boat in his, in his garage. But he did take off. He went to Denison originally for a bit and realized he needed to go to school to learn about um, boat design. So he went off to MIT and he got his master's degree in uh, naval architecture and marine engineering. He then took off and went out to California, went to work for McDonnell Douglas, and he was, he was analyzing missiles. And then he decided, well, I think I'd rather go take my information, my knowledge, and make uh, surfboards out of composite materials that he learned about probably at McDonnell Douglas. After that, he then said, okay, took his wife, said, let's go to Florida and build boats. And he ended up jumping into that same crowd that we've talked about that were involved with Irwin and then Endeavor. And then he decided he wanted to do his own thing and he bought a small factory. I think it was a 4,000 square foot factory originally and started building island packet boats. So anyway, let's take a look at this puppy right here and we'll head up the stairway to heaven. Oh, yeah, let's head up. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're going to get recommended to more people and so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing. So every little bit helps. Thanks again. Uh -huh. So, Rende. Yeah. Come on aboard. Oh, thanks. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm in a pretty amazing boat here. You know, we've looked at a number of boats in this size range, right? Yeah. This is a... Uh, 27 foot island packet. Where are you? And I'm right here. <laughs> here I am. You're pitching a tent. I can move a little bit. Would that be better? Yeah, that's good. How's that? They've designed the boat with geared steering. This is very much like the Allied Sea Wind Catch. It goes back to a, uh, a, a gear that rotates on a, on a quadrant back there that has teeth in it, and that steers the boat. And it's also got an autopilot right down here. So we didn't have that on the Sea Wind Catch, which is one of the boats I want to compare this to. The Sea Wind Catch was 30, um, she was 32 feet. Yep. And uh, it's a great sailing boat, loved it. We had a great time with it, catch rigged. But this is even bigger. Now, I spent some time with it. Nice big deep combings here for you. We're going to stay and board this boat. The seats are slightly rounded, so you're not going to necessarily fly off it. Uh, and the helmsman is going to be right up there on the high seat, right behind the wheel, straddling the wheel. You do that. Uh, and uh, steer the boat wherever you want to go. Now, you can also sit to the side of that. Sit right down here in this corner, tucked away. Lots of leg room for you in front of the wheel, behind the wheel in this case. And then you can see all the way forward. Now, sadly, we can't open up all this canvas for you today. Usually we could, but we weren't able to get a hold of the owners in time to do that. So uh, we'll, we'll put in some still shots and you'll get an idea of what it all looks like. At the very pointy end of the boat, we have a really nice bowsprit, don't we? Yeah, we do. And did you see a nice uh, anchor roller up there, too? I did. And uh, a nice um, chain locker for both those. All that line feeds down into the chain locker. And then the other thing you noticed up there, too, was what? Uh, had some great, oh, the bulwarks, which are nice and deep. Really deep. Really safe for yep. a 27-footer. Then the, uh, the handrails on the cabin top are really nice. One other piece was the mast. Ah. Where was the mast stepped? Uh, deck stepped, I think. Deck stepped. Nothing wrong with that. You keep your shrouds tightened up. You keep all the rig going. An island pack at 27, heading toward Bermuda, fell off a wave. And those are big waves to fall off of. She rolled over, wiped out her mast, and popped right up and floated right under lines, and oh, the, wow. the people survived. So the point here is that, yeah, um, that could have happened to any boat, not just because it was deck stepped. Uh, you could have bent the spar on a, uh, a, a keel step mast too. How about some lockers? lockers? Lockers, well, I'm sitting on one and you know what we're gonna find under here? I do not. Oh, it's a little baby one. Just a little shallow thing. So probably a quarter yeah. berth underneath you? This boat has a huge cockpit. 
I, and again, I can't really look. I'll do this. I can tell you that's six feet right there from the bulkhead back to the tip of my fingers. And so you got, you know, seven, seven and a half feet of cockpit length and depth. It's got a nice depth to it, too, so it catches the back of your thighs and not just uh, your tailbone. So, uh, very interested in making this boat comfortable and cruise worthy, and they've done a good job with it. While we're here, here's your bilge pump over there, Randy. I know you like to see that. Oh, and a little shower. And a little handheld shower out here, too. And you'll find out we even have another shower below on this boat. Oh, wow. Anyway, we've got another uh, locker right over here for you. Uh, look at that storage for everything you want and uh, your your bumpers everything that you don't want to have somewhere else you can put in there on this side we have propane storage locker that's pretty convenient isn't it now let's talk about engine access how good is that pretty great and you know you could stand down there now this boat was built in 1990 this is the original engine and you know, this spring, I would take this boat and degrease it. Make that engine room nice and clean. Wouldn't you? I would. Then you could find everything, you could adjust everything, but you could just stand right down behind the engine. This may be one of the better engine access places ever. And... Kind of reminds me of that Nimble 30 we saw a long time ago. Uh, Do you remember that? It had a cockpit. Yes, yeah. Cover yeah, that yeah. kind of popped up like yep, this. Yep, yep, exactly. And the nice thing about this too, worst case, the engine really dies, you can haul it right up through this hatch. Okay, I'm gonna head below, and did you say you wanted to come below? Yeah, I'd like to check it out. Follow me. Seriously, back up a second. I want you to notice this companionway. This is some of the complaints early on that we've seen about some of these smaller boats, and they make these great big veed companionways, okay? Okay. Uh, they're nice and they're great for walking in and out of, lots of room and so forth, but they're also an enormous hole for water to come splashing through. There's sort of a bridge ridge, I would call this thing down here. Oh, yeah. It's not really a deck, but uh, that's going to help keep some of the water down in the basic part of the cockpit. But up here, you put the washboards in, but they could fly out. They don't have to go very far to fly out. So uh, I think one of the items on the list to help bring the 27 up to an A category good for offshore sailing is to simply squeeze this companionway in. So, Rande, yeah. I gotta tell you, this uh, interior is Boku spacious. The settees here, look at the, the depth of this. I love deep settees because it, it carries the weight of your leg all the way to the edge. Um, these are set up too. Uh, with storage behind it, I won't pull it out, but like all these things have storage underneath and behind it. And uh, you've got a good sleeping berth here at sea. I don't know if they put, let's see, nope. They do not have um, lee cloths on here yet, but you'd want to do that. We have uh, the, the essential galley table here, okay? The uh, essential saloon table. And this has just this little simple pin right here. And I think you'll like this. Can you pull this one pin out? It's like a hand grenade. And then we're gonna set this down with one leg that comes out and it fits right into a little pinhole on the floor. Look at that. Once you open it up, and I see there's a hole right here that, that tells me there's a, another leg stored away somewhere and it'll put it, go in there and it will support the table when we flip it open. But it's really big and the people on the other side there, put another two people on the other side. Yep. It's a four person boat or maybe a couple with three little kids. Um, and these, these hidden storage racks are great because uh, you can set bottles in here or spices or a book rack, whatever. This is pretty nice woodwork in here. Uh, this boat has got a little, needs a little bit of attention inside. Uh, it's, just, it's mainly a cleaning attention. And we're all set. Now, that, that worked out pretty well, didn't it? So one thing you see back here, two things, actually, a couple of things. No, first of all, it's got a quarter berth and it's jammed up with all the cushions and so forth for the cockpit but look how deep this thing is and wide this and like wide i mean it's, it's almost two quarter you know, berths it, two kids could be in there two or a cozy couple whatever could be in there and they'd have their own port light right here a nice stainless port light these are all high quality materials they've used on these boats yeah the other thing is that notice that the interior liner 
everywhere. This is all a separate piece that's been glued into the boat. And the nice thing about that is that it's really easy to clean. Here's our old bugaboo, right? The electric panel. Oh yeah. What have they done here? Put it nice un this, up and under, yeah. yeah. Robert was listening to me. <laughs> it's gonna be impossible to get um, water into this. The boat's going to be sinking. But here's your, your 12 volt and your 120 volt panel over here and it's all out of the way. Now the master switch is underneath the companionway and this is pretty well waterproof usually. This is an amazing amount of space here. Great big quarter berth, really comfortable settee on the starboard side. And on the port side, there's a double settee over here. I say double because there's two cushions. An adult can lie the whole length of this if they want to, or children. We can also expand the, I love these little fold up tables. You like these too, don't you, Randy? Yeah. Big galley. Wow, 27 foot. This boat is getting more amazing as we walk through it. We have a nice cutting board sitting here on top of a two burner propane stove. Just two burners, no oven. We have our pot and pan storage. Deep and, oh, oh. these are true seafaring folks. We love them. And more storage for forks and knives. And there's drawers over here. Uh, big ice box. And how many pounds of ice can you put in there? Look at the zinc. That's a little baby one. It's not a baby one, it's a huge <laughs> one. Look how deep that is. And it's close to the center line. We have a little hand pump here. What do you think that's for? Ooh, probably the... Um pump out the fridge? I, I would guess that, yeah, because you always like, that ice melts in refrigerators and it sits in the bottom. And you got to get it out. You don't want it to go to the bilge because it will stink down there. And right here they have a little... Ah, your favorite. I do. I love that. And clean up stuff here to work with some Clorox bleach. You always want to throw some of that in your fresh water tank at the beginning of the season. Now, you wanted to see the engine, you said. Yeah, is there, is there engine access? I mean, we saw it in the cockpit, but... Right. Well, that's major. And then there's a little piece down here I think you might like. We'll see. Just below the master switch here, uh, we have... Uh, well, here's an engine hour meter. I think this has got... I've forgotten, like a... Th what does that say? About a Th thousand. About a thousand hours. Not very much no. for a 30-year-old boat. Oh. And there's the front of your engine. Now, why would you want to open this? Because you want to check your belts. These are really too soft, okay? Yeah, you can see some black shavings underneath to show that yep. it's getting a little chewed up. Yep, and you can find all this. I'll just get one of these things, and you'll see all that black rubber right there. Your pulleys may not be aligned. Now, I don't know if you can see my finger over here. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, right there, the belt's coming around the shiv, and the belt is now just slightly below the top of the shiv. What does that mean? It means that that you're eating up the belt and it's no longer uh, grounding itself right out at the very bottom of the shiv. Yeah. It's being run down and used up, so it's gonna slip. It's not gonna get the full traction or uh, commitment of horsepower out of the engine to what it's supposed to be doing. So uh, it's kind of an interesting thing. That's more important than it looks like. You can't just yeah. leave that alone. <laughs> this whistle, you have around your neck. When you fall over the side and they can't find you, you blow on it, ah. and there's no little ball in there, okay? That's the type, that's why these work better in water. If you had a ball in there, blah, 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 they wouldn't yeah. hear you. Yeah, let's talk it. about the headroom overall. Well, the headroom overall is amazing. This is, as we said earlier when we were below decks, that when they went up from the 26 to the 26.2, and they got to the 27, suddenly they now had six foot of headroom. And uh, they figured that was enough, six foot. Now, <laughs> we got six one and maybe... Yep, another inch or two, yep. That much more. but. You gotta start losing it sometime because the boats are built that way. This is kind of the forward cabin because this boat is only 27 feet. Uh, you're not gonna have a major hanging locker or some other things that we did get with the, the uh, uh, sea wind. But you do have, so think of this as sort of being a little sitting area for your forward cabin. And uh, there's a little locker here for stuff. So you could put some stuff in here if, you, if you're living up this way of the boat. And uh, underneath, there's a place to store your charts. Now here's the head. And again, really uh, good size considering a 27 foot boat. It's got a hatch overhead with a, uh, a solar fan on it. And it also has a big, big opening port there uh, and storage behind the head. It's a manual flush head, but there's a shower. See the shower head in the sink by the sink there? Oh yeah. And uh, here's one small detail is that the this counter structure overhangs the cabinet by like 
an inch or two. So if it gets wet or drips, it's not going to just go back into the cabinet. Exactly. But look what else is nice, too. Look down at the bottom. Oh, uh, yeah. See, so you've got a foot well there. Yep. Can you reach that seat and put it down? Oh, yeah. Uh, we like this uh, on the PB because it uh, allows you to sit down and have a shower. Yep. And not be thrown around in the boat. So... It's teak, and it will dry off, and I might just leave it. It sort of looks nicer down, actually, than it opening does, the door yeah. and seeing the head. I kind of like that. This is a, quite an amazing boat. I've been very surprised with this boat. I, I was expecting, I don't know what I was expecting, but I didn't expect this much room and comfort. Can you see this four-peak up here now? I can't see it without the proper measuring. Oh, you really want me to <laughs> Randy. Okay. If I go up here, I'm not getting out. You know that. Okay. Now, here we go, Randy. Let's see how this works. I'm going to crawl into this berth. This is a pretty big test. Whoa! You know what? This worked out really well. Right over my head here, I have my own hatch. Oh, fresh air coming in there, huh? Can you see that? Yep. Pretty nice. Uh, so I'm very impressed. I could almost sleep at this end, but uh, I won't. And, but maybe I will. And since I'm up here, let's see what they've got for a chain locker. How do you like that? Nice. Split chain. Now, this allows you to keep your rope on one side and your chain on the other, and they wouldn't ever meet. Okay. Randy, I think I've had it for the day. You've definitely done your work. It's been a long day. I hope everybody's enjoyed seeing this island packet. All right. Uh, well, uh, and say good night to you on the island. Oh, good night, island folks. boats out here today either. Just one on anchor. Oh yeah. One hardy soul. I've known about the island packet for some time. They've never they've never teed me up the way, for example, something like that Pearson 41 that we looked at did. We got aboard this 27 today and my we've had a couple of other comparisons. We had that Shannon 28, right? Remember yep. that? Yep. Lovely little boat. And then of course I've, many times I've spoken of the Allied Sea Wind I spent a little time on and this boat had, again, 30% more room than a boat that was four feet longer. So the room and the accommodations for a small family were outstanding. The fit and finish was wonderful, and the cockpit was commodious. And shallow draft, the draft is under four feet. It's like three foot eight inches or something. So uh, terrific, terrific design all the way around. A surprise for the old captain here. And we're going to give her a 10 because I know she floats. i got to give it another 10 because of Robert's design work and what he put into the boat and the subtle little things to her. Everything from the molded headliner, the giant, really truly giant quarter berth that the captain would actually fit into. I'm going another 5 for this boat. We're going 25 for this boat. Built down in Florida by a company that's still in business. Isn't that a nice thing? Yeah, one of the few that's been able to survive. They must be doing something right. But thank you, gang, for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time around. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now, and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>